Hello my crafty friends, how you guys doing today? This is Yvonne and today I'm here to share with you something I made and I hope that you like it. I thought it was a cute idea. I did it up and it's a little different and we all like a little different. This is a Christmas card that I created and you open it this way and it will say home for Christmas. You open it this way again and it says magical Christmas wishes and then when you open it totally to sign it, it will say from your home to from our home to yours it's so so cute I just love it and I added a bit of embellishment and I'll explain to you as I go along so stick around we're going to start right now the stamp that I used on this <clears throat> on this particular card is a stamp is creative stamping and it's from the UK and you can buy it usually at your local books uh, big bo big store where you have uh, a um, bookstore like uh, Indigo or Chapters or Joann's if you're in the States or stuff like that you can find these and um, this is a stamp set that I use that comes with it and I normally stamp everything up on the cover so I know what magazine it goes with and I just purchased this recently so um, you should be able to find it and I use the little uh, Volkswagen here with the snow Christmas tree on the top. I use Magical Christmas Wishes for sentiments, Home for Christmas for the sentiment, and From Our Home to Yours with the sentiment. All in here, and I got all those with this magazine. If ever you, if, if you've never purchased any, it's it's really worth your dollar bill that you pay for. Not only that, I received those stamps with the magazine, plenty of ideas. Plus, you, they, this, set, this particular book, you have a whole bunch of paper that they give with you. Can't go wrong with that. Anyway, let's keep going. So, another thing that, you're, that I've used, I've used uh, the uh, stamping pad from Stampin' Up! And I used the Cherry Cobbler. I used the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink to uh, ink up the stamp. I've used the Copic Markers. And for those of you who are Copic Markers... I would, uh, just a little note is that they are going up 40% 1st of January and uh, the 1st of January 2019th. So if I were you, I would get out there and get some because they're not cheap as it is. And if they're going up 40%, ouch, is all I got to say. You're going to see a lot of people converting to other alcohol markers. And, um, but uh, I'm disappointed in that, obviously, but, you know. It's life, right? So you just adjust to it. So if you're a Copic fan like me, I started buying them years ago. They were $3.99 when I started buying them. So um, don't hesitate to either get your refills or get your markers. That's what I used there. I also used a white pen. And I used a, micro, a Micron number 5 pen. I, for the ovals, I just used my oval stitch dies and I use some dimension obviously uh, to bring this up but it's really really simple the cardstock that you're going to need is a double-sided piece of cardstock cardstock that is 12 inches long but you're going to cut it five and a half inches wide five and a half inches by 12 inches is going to be your your uh, decoration here in the front you're going to need a card base, which is your average five and a half by four and a quarter. You are going to need a piece of coordinating light cardstock to add inside your card, and this is going to be four by five and a quarter. Then you're going to need another piece for your base for the front of the card, which is going to be four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And I use the metallic here. Um, it's a little bit heavier than the regular metallic paper that we get. I just we had a whole bunch of metallic cards. Don't know where they came from. And I've just been cutting them up to, uh, to use in my big shot and do stuff like this. And so uh, never throw anything away. So this is going to be, again, 5 and 1 eighth by 5 and... No, 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. And then you're going to need another piece four and five and a quarter four by five and a quarter to fit inside there and then we are going to make this piece of paper this is going to be the challenging little part if you want to call it challenging the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paper 
and you're going to measure the center of that. So if it's five and a half, it would be two and three quarters. Two and three quarters, I make a mark right here, okay? Let me bring that just a tad in so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so my five and a half, I'll go two and three quarters. That is my two and a half, see? Good thing I brought it up. There you go. Two and three quarters is right here. That's going to be the center of that piece of paper. Then I'm going to get my cutting board, but do not hesitate if you don't have a cutting board. Just take your ruler at this point, go from that point to the end point here. Now I'm going to back it up a little bit so you'll be able to see it on the cutting board too. And make a pencil mark, make a pencil mark and cut it with your scissors. You're going to end up with a long flag, long triangular. So, but if you do have a cutting board, just take your mark, bring it right up to the crease where it cuts, bring your corner up to the crease on the bottom, back it up some more here so you can see what I'm doing. So, you'll put your pencil mark onto the cutting piece there, and the other one on the corner over there, and then you are going to you're going to take it and you're going to you're going to cut it. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Put it on the score mark, on the pencil mark, put the other end on the cutting and voila. You have your piece. Now you're done with these. You can keep them for scrap for later on. Now you're going to use your cutting, your scoring board, and if you don't have a scoreboard, all you need to do is um, score it, fold it in three, but I find it's a lot easier to fold it in three by scoring it at four, and then at four again. I'll just score it at four, and score it at four again, and there you have your score marks. Now, you can put this away, you won't need this anymore. Now the biggest thing is what side you want to use it on. Once you've chosen your double-sided cardstock, which side do you want to show? Because as you can see here, this is the busier side, I would say, more Christmassy than on this side. So it was easy for me to choose on that. But if you have a piece that is really um, neutral, just pick the side that you want. If it's a side that's very busy and you want that to show, then this is what you're going to do. So you're going to take this, and I want this to show for the first layer. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to fold it back this way. I'm going to take it and fold it back in this way. That's right. Okay? Got to measure this to make sure that while I talked, if I scored it at four, no, I scored it at three, three and three quarters. Okay, so that's four. And if I go here, if I go here, four is here. There, that's better. That'll fold a lot better. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it up here like that and then I'm going to fold it here on the full mark there and then I have three folds okay four inches four inches four inches and you may want to you may want to score it at four inches before you cut it you might find that easier too for yourself so here I have my piece ready to go this is my base ready to go so the first thing I do is I take my the inside of my card and I am going to put that in. You can use whatever glue you want, whatever you have handy. If you're using wet glue, there's a little trick for it not to ripple. Just take it once you spread it down and take it with your finger and just rub it a bit so the everything will be kind of even. That way there it won't soak through the fibers and leave a bubble and then end up not a bubble, but it'll it'll soak into the fibers of the cardstock, and that's what makes it all rippled up. But if you spread it even, it'll dry before it ever goes through all the fibers. So I have my inside done. 
there you go. Now I'm going to take my first base, which is for me the metallic, and I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to add that card in here like so, with, and I'm going to put it in as, as even as I can. There you go, like that. And then I'm going to take my topper here and I'm going to do the same thing. My topper of four by five and a quarter. I'm going to add that on and I'm going to center it as even as I can, like so. Then this is where my lovely banner goes. And the banner, I'm just going to add it here And don't forget to put it on the side that the card opens, like this. You don't want to put it the other side. You could still use it, but it works better if you use it on the side where the card is open. And then I'm going to add it from one end to the other. I started it myself. I started it right onto the base layer, because I like that piece to show here. So this is the way it is you end up with something looking like this. And now all you need to do is cut out the pieces that you want to add on top here. And when you pull it here, you end up making a layer to put in here. And you can do what you like to put in here too. It's I use the remainder of the, um, the strips to put here. So, with this, I could cut it down and add it on the bottom, which would add a little bit of color, a little bit something a little different, but it's easy as that. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, the, the trick on this tutorial is what I wanted to show you was how to cut and make a front of a card this way. And then you can add whatever you want on the front and make it to your special liking. But don't forget, whatever makes you happy is what's going to make the recipient happy. So have yourself a crafty day. This is Yvonne, and I'm signing off for now, and we'll catch you real soon. Bye-bye.